And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Kassarian, and we are back in Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game. So today we're going to be working on a new model of the Voyager. All right, let's remember it's 1978, and we are working on a new model of the Voyager. Okay, so first of all, we're going to use a sedan body, and this is going to be our luxury vehicle. So, I think... That looks like a good body type to use, right? Yeah, sure, why not? Alright, so let's let's give it a bit more of that look. A bit more space there. Let's sweep this back just a bit. Give us a bit more engine space. Let's look a little bit more aerodynamic like that. Pull the wheel wells out just a little bit. Let's look at a little less of a round look there. There we go, and there we go. Okay, so, a bit of quality. So, this is the 78 Voyager. <clears throat> it is going to be our luxury sedan. Monocoque galvanized. Engine placement will be front, uh, transverse. McPherson front, but we're actually going to go with a double wishbone in the rear. We're using this fierce in front because that gives us a bit more engine space. If you watch if I go into double wishbone, uses up more engine space. Where's the fierce and strut? See, you can see the shift there. Ta da! There you go. Okay, so panel material, we're going to stick with steel. A bit more quality there. This is a luxury vehicle after all. Alright, so let's go with these guys. And we're going to have to make them a little bit smaller. Just a little. We'll arc them out towards the side. And give us that nice wrap-around blinker look. Okay, so. Now. Let's put some uh, taillights on this baby. And we're going to use the same taillight style we have been using. Turn them up like, come on, come on, baby. You know you want to. There we go. We're going to turn them up like that. Shrink them a bit so they actually fit on the car. There we go. A bit low down there. Looks pretty decent. Badging. All right. Let's use our luxury badging. And luxury badging. Okay, handles. What are we going with for handles here? Um, let's do this style. No, I don't like that. But see, it looks better if it's mounted high up. So let's do this and chrome it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. This is a luxury vehicle after all. Okay, uh, anything else I want to do with this off the bat? Oh, yep, exhaust packs. Let's do an exhaust pack, and let's put it... Uh, this isn't a sports car, so let's do twin singles. Smaller twin singles. There we go, that looks better. All right, bit more quality. Good. Okay, so for this we're doing transverse front-wheel drive, four-cylinder, and a four-door model. So this trim is going to be the four-door. Okay, engines. What can we use for an engine? Um, we could go all the way back. We could use that. We can all, We can actually use the XE8, um, which I believe that's a 3.6 liter V8 engine. It's not bad. Not bad at all. 3.6 V8 isn't too bad. We could also go with the Zephyr 1.6, but that's a little small. Uh, we could go back to the Prometheus, which is what? A 3.9 V6? Yeah, economy, 0.99. And if we went with the XC8. Actually, it's more efficient on the X. The XC8 is a more efficient engine. Pushing 229 versus the Prometheus. Is pushing a whopping 310. Now, if I went with... 
What does it mean that it's super L? Oh, because this is the stupid high grade one. Okay. Uh, we want to just use the 3.9i. So that's going to give us 259.859. So we have our options here. Uh, okay, so we're going to have to change this up a bit. All right, so let's duplicate this engine. Um, get out of there. There we go. Sport I unleaded. Okay, so let's give us a bit better look at this. All right. Okay, what can we change with this engine? We're going to switch it to regular. We're going to get knocking issues, of course. So what we'll do is we are going to back our ignition timing off a bit. And then back down our compression a little bit. There we go. So it's 255. Okay, that's not bad. All right, 255 horsepower. Uh, there was something I saw over here that gave me pause, which was that we're using single if I switch to TPC. Yeah, we'll just keep it on single for right now. Um, RPM limit at 6,000. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. If we push a little higher, we're starting to get reliability issues. So we'll keep it right where it is. Uh, catalytic. We have to switch the cat around. We're using regular gas. Why won't you let me put a cat on this thing? Oh, okay, because I have to change the year. 72. 73. 74. 75. 76. 77. 78. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So that's that's done a whammy on this whole thing. That has done something of a whammy. All right. So we have to change this up again. If I go TPC, what do I get? Reduced power. Okay. Um, I don't want to turbocharge it necessarily, uh, but we're looking pretty good there. I think the RPM limit needs to go up a bit. So it's at 6,200 RPM as its max. That's not too bad. All right, so we're injecting it. Quantity plus five. How are we looking over here? Am I reducing my exhaust at all? Nope, I am not. Okay, so we're doing double reversed flows. All right, that's not shabby. That's not bad at all. V6, okay. We have a bit more to play with here because we're at 91, so I can give it a bit more compression. I don't want to do that, because that's going to drop my smoothness down. So, I'll also give it... I can back the fuel mixture a bit. There we go. Back off that fuel mixture a bit. Wait, that increased my... Interesting. Okay, so we're down to 0.894 fuel uh, pounds per horsepower hour. It's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. All right, so let's save this up. Now let's head forward here. So this is going to be an automatic torque converter four speed. It's claiming 136 for its max speed right now. It won't be at 136 when we're done with it. Trust me. Okay. A bit of quality there. All right, so we're going to go medium compound roads because those are nice. We're going to go with alloy rims. put 195 tires on there, which is the max we can do right now. And that looks nice and, yeah. So we're going to go solid, single, solid, single. Bit of quality there. None of that shenanigans. And now we're going to need 226 kg of cooling. So let's head back to our car designer and let's take a look at what we need done here. All right. So... We'll move that. And then we want to go to vents. No, grills. And, ooh, I don't think I've seen this one before. Um, not the style I'm looking for. Not the style I'm looking for at all. 
that, and then that, and put that in there. There we go. And there we go. All right, that's looking really nice and clean now. So 226 is the max needed. Right, 226. So let's give it all the brake cooling we can manage. There we go, there we go. All right, now we can go back here and look at our actual top speed, which is gonna be about 130. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna jack this down all the way down to comfort land. There we go. Interior, five seat. Uh, premium. Nice, nice and quality there. Premium A-Track with power steering. And advanced safety. Okay. So, we're going to go with progressives. Gas tube pro twin progressives with passive sway bar with comfort settings on our suspension presets. Okay, so we're not looking too bad. All right, let's look at the design and no oh, detail stats. Thank you. All right, understeer is an issue. Gearbox is an issue. Footprint's an issue. Well, footprint, we're going to fit Brake fade, okay, we'll fix that. And brake distance zero? Well, that's new. Oh, that's why. Okay, so we're gonna have to go double fronts. Jeez. Much larger brake pads in the front. Much larger. Okay, we're going triple fronts. And give more comfort on this. We have to go for Ventus then. There we go. That killed our brake fade issues. Nice. Okay. And we got some good comfort stats out of that because we pulled those all the way down. Now we're going to get some brake balance issues here. It's going to yell at us for that. You can see it under detail stats. Brake balance. Eh. But it's a heck of a lot better than the... Brake fade, which I now can't see. Ah, brake fade. There we go. Okay, footprint's an issue. I don't care about that. That's going to fix itself. All right, why is my utility so bloody low? Bad cargo volume. That's what's killing it is bad cargo volume. Uh, I get it. I get it. Bad cargo volume. All right. Uh, how do we fix that? More of an ass, I guess. Change that a little bit. All right, let's see if that fixed some of our cargo volume issues. I'm hoping that it did. Um, not by enough to really matter. Not by enough to really matter. Okay. Oh, it's, it was looking at practicality. Ah, okay, I see. Well, you know what? Those changes aren't really going to kill us. Okay, so it does. they don't like the footprint issue, but that's going to be here or there. Um, brake fade, brake balance. That's fine. Understeer, oversteer, roll angle, wheel spin, wheel spin. We need to fix the bloody wheel spin. It's always the wheel spin. <sighs> right. 45.1. It's always bloody wheel spin. All right. I guess it's that's just the age of what we're doing here. Uh, let's try dropping the spacing. Okay, bump that a bit. Come on. You you can calculate it back to 130, trust me. Or apparently not. Alright, that's fine. Why do I spike my grip right there? I don't understand that. 
Okay, but we are, we are looking at that. Okay, that's good. Wheel spin, yeah, well, there's not much we can really do about that. Miles per gallon's back down again. We're at like 12 point something, but there isn't honestly much we can do. Uh, comfort, are we taking any penalties? Uh, chassis stiffness is a bit of an issue. Throttle response is a bit of an issue. They're not a fan of the torque curve or cabin noise. Suspension quality, entertainment quality, interior quality, and with the passenger space is as always an issue. Let's go back and let's give us more passenger space there and more passenger space there and a bit more passenger space there. Now what are we looking like? Um, a little better, a little better. We're still having roll angle issues, but meh. Stiffness and top speed, that's fine. I don't especially care if we take a penalty on prestige. Safety's good, economy's meh, off-road, utility, practicality. All right, let's look at our markets. Family, sport premium, fun premium, and sport budget, all right. I don't know why I'm out of the market on family sport premium, but let's look at the detail stats. Okay, fun premium. Uh, we are winning the market. Sport budget. We are somehow doing really well there and less expensive than our competitor. Family sport premium. We are doing really well there and less expensive. That's a bloody miracle. I'm less expensive than someone for once. Family premium. Um, we are more. We are more expensive and more liked. Okay. Same thing. Muscle. Somehow we are the highest ranker in muscle cars even though I did not set out to build a muscle car. City premium. Uh, we are more expensive, but much more well-liked. So the Voyager is a great chassis, because I'm seeing that all the way down. Uh, we're outmatched on sport. Convertible, they like us. I don't know why this isn't a convertible. Uh, same with utility sport premium, convertible sport budget, family utility premium, pony. Pony? This isn't a pony car. And commuter. Commuter? How the hell are we more liked? This thing has the gas mileage of a tank. <sighs> A very hungry tank. All right, well that's fine. All right, so let's let's get ourselves another design model here. Let's uh, save this up and let's go for new trim. Trim one, four door sport, F four D sport. We're gonna go with a. You know what? No, it's a four door sport. We're gonna leave it with a four door. Transverse front wheel drive. We're gonna shift that back a bit. Shift this back, and we're gonna collapse. I can't collapse this pearl compartment anymore. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, there's no really no good way to make this thing smaller than to turn it into a four door. All right, engine variant time. We are using once again. I believe we're gonna use the Prometheus, and we're going to use the 3.9 Sport Inject Unleaded. Except we're going to duplicate it. And this is going to be the 3.9 Sport I UL Turbo. Excuse me, let me rename it. There we go, thank you. 3.9 Sport I Unleaded Turbo. If we can fit a turbocharger in this vehicle. Nope, it is too big to fit in the car. Somehow I figured it would tell us that. Okay, so what we'll do instead is, what other engines do I have that'll fit? We have the Zephyr, which I believe the Zephyr is a 1.6 liter. Yeah, it's 1.6 liter I4 cast iron single overhead cam. No. The XC8 will fit. new variant or clone this variant we have the na clone except this is going to be a 1978 engine design running on the xc8 platform which again is a 3.6 liter v v8 so it's a very small v8 very small v8 
Now we gotta jump down here. We gotta see, okay, it's already built for regular gasoline. So that's good. I like to see that. And it's pushing 230 horsepower. Now let's see what else we can do with this engine because I'm pretty certain we can not fit a turbocharger. You know what? Cannot load engines too big. Okay. You know what we can do? Let me look at this. Okay. So let's look at some stats on this. Can I squeeze any more power out of it? Um, not really. If I go to TPC... Now, actually, if I go to TPC, it gives me a bit more power. Economy's worse, though. So that's fine. Okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to back this up. We are going to redo this as a two-door sport. Why? Because I feel like it. Can't really give us any more space on the engine. You know what I could do? Let's pull a new engine. This is going to be the X06i. The XI06. It's going to be an inline six. Aluminum block, and it's too big. How small do I have to make you to fit? Uh, just about a 2.6 liter V6. DOHC. Oh, come on. Four valve aluminum. So it's top and bottom aluminum, right? Forged, I beam, forged. We'll leave that stock. Get a bit more quality there. But we'll turbocharge it with a single turbocharger with a medium intercooler performance rig. We're going to inject it single performance regular. Short cast single. Three-way cat. Reverse flow, reverse flow. Okay, the car does not like that. We are way over our octane rating. Which I figured we would be. So let's back our compression way the hell down. So we're pushing 207 horsepower here. That, that isn't very good. Alright, let's give ourselves some more fuel mixture. Yes, I know this thing is going to be stupid. Stupid fuel consumption. And let's turn up that max boost. And let's also turn up our RPM limit way up. So it's pushing 224 horsepower now, which is not stellar at all. So we're gonna have to boost our compression and give ourselves some more cam profile. 
And it actually wants higher RPM, I think. Well, nothing's breaking yet. Okay, so we're pushing 248 horsepower out of this engine. Okay. So we're pushing 259 now. We've advanced our ignition timing quite a bit. Cam profile's pretty high. Whoa, okay. Well, our economy sucks, but this thing's pushing about 276 horsepower. But look at that smoothness value right there. That's that's nice. I like to see that. All right. So, our compressor is reducing airflow. Well, we're now pushing 275. We give her a bit more boost. So we're pushing 278 at 6400. Oops, not what I wanted. Okay. That's looking pretty decent. 278 horsepower out of a six cylinder engine. Oh, and I forgot to name this thing. This is the, uh, what is it? XI08. Or the XI6. There we go. The XI06. And variant, this is the UL Turbo. Unleaded Turbo. Let's see how it sounds? Decent. Nice flat torque curve on the top there. Nice flat curve on the top. All right. Car design time. Manual, single clutch, five speed. This thing will theoretically reach a speed of 159 miles an hour. I don't for a second believe it'll actually get there. All right. Sports compound roads. 195 all the way. Allies across the whole thing. Uh, all right, what do we go with here? We went with vented triples, but we're going to do more race here. Vented singles. Um, we'll do fully clad. We need 301 kg of cooling on this thing. Which I'm not surprised needs more cooling because it's a turbo. Okay. Uh, grill time. What grill do we want to use? I want to use this one. Let's go back into the car manager. There we go. Okay. Five seat sport. We'll stick with the premium. And advanced 70s. Now, for this one, we're going to go with that gas twin tubes passive and a sport suspension. Well. We have to fix some things. We have to fix a lot of things. They don't like the engine. And they don't like the wheel spin. Or the suspension options, for that matter. Brake fade isn't too bad. Sportiness, what are we losing on here? Um, they don't like the engine that much. 
see. Come on, guys. It has better quartering and better acceleration. Seriously. They don't like the gear ratios, apparently. They do like the suspension options. So, we just need more, yeah, we need better whatever. All right, let's get some size on these things. Big old fashioned brakes here, guys. Big old fashioned brakes. Uh, pretty much solved the brake fade issue. All right, we have to go down to 149. Yeah, well, wheel spin's still a problem, but we kind of knew it would be because, honestly, look at that. Now, if I switch to a four-speed ratio, yeah, no one likes that. Okay, five-speed ratios it is. Now, if I try and reduce that wheel spin a bit, what happens? There. That looks like a good number there. So we could do manual, manual locker. Yeah, I guess we're just doing the open locker then. Of course, the thing's front wheel drive, so that's the issue there. Okay, camber time. That's about as good as we're going to get, I think. Now, if I increase the ride height a bit... Hey, alright, that's not doing much damage to our sportiness score. But it did some nice things to my drivability numbers. Okay. This isn't coming out nearly as nice as I wanted it to be. They don't like the driver height, and they don't like the engine sound. Or the brake balance. The biggest complaint they have, though, is that understeer-oversteer issue. But I don't want to murder my drivability by giving them the understeer-oversteer issue. Because there are already a lot of things they don't like about this vehicle. If we look at the markets, we're not doing great. Or we are, never mind. I don't get it. It feels like these two screens have no connection. And we're great on Family Sport Premium. Not great on Muscle Premium. Or Sport. Or Hyper. Or GT. Or Light Sport. Family Sport we we're doing okay on. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that at all. All right, anyways, that was the XI-06. I don't think we'll be producing many of those. Anyways, this has been Mr. Kassarian. I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. If you didn't for whatever reason, please let me know why and what you think I could fix to make it better. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. And as always, have fun building.